Okay, the recording has started. So um, this meeting is now recorded. And by continuing to be in this meeting, you are consenting to be recorded. Okay, moving on, as soon as my screen starts working, that is. Okay, so about the meeting etiquettes, um, you know the drill. So I think this is our, a fourth uh, meeting together. And so I'm not really going to go over all this again. Um, you pretty much know. Um, and uh, since we are a small uh, crowd today, we can almost, uh, we can always, you know, unmute yourself and uh, can, if you have any questions, please feel free to do so. And um, yeah, I wouldn't mind the video if you have to come on the video again. But let me tell you that, and before I forget, um, the next session is going to be a, la a last session, which is two weeks from now. And that session being the last, I do want to take a class picture to keep up with the tradition of taking a class picture. So um, I hope you can join and, and join with, uh, you know, with your best dress on and, uh, you know, um, and we can have a nice uh, class picture, um, whoever can join. So I'm going to definitely share with your classmates in the, in the classroom, uh, but just wanted to let you know, okay? All right, so um, today's agenda, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about data visualization. And I know you went through a lot of material, um, you're going through the assignment, and I hope what we are going to talk today is really going to supplement uh, what you have learned so far. Then we'll kind of talk about the assignment three, um, which is the one that you're kind of working on right now. And then we'll take in any questions you may have, okay? So this particular session, I'm going to start a little differently. I have a couple of videos, folks, and I want you to kind of watch those videos. The first one is going to be a very short video. I'm going to start it for a few seconds. And what I want you to do is to make sure you, your speakers are on, your setup is okay, you're able to hear the music at your end, um, so all of that. So that is going to be a little bit of a test video, okay? So I'm going to start it and run it for a few seconds. Are you guys able to hear it? Yes. Okay. All right, and I'm going to stop the video here and go to the main video that I want to run as part of our discussion today, okay? All right, so here we go. So the first video is coming up. So I realized that's what marketing people are good at. They can take statistics and make them say whatever they want. They can make their message fit a statistic. So I figured if they could do it, I'm an engineer, I'm a prototype guy, so I worked up some slides to prove that anybody can do that, if we can go back to my slides. So here you go. I looked at some statistics and I found these on the internet and I'm just gonna make it say what I choose to make it say. So they, they polled a thousand people. Turns out three out of a thousand people polled said they've choked on a potato chip. Not died, just <clears throat> and they were fine. <laughs> Same thousand people, only one in a thousand said they've choked on a pretzel. So if you were in marketing, you could say, pretzels, the snack that's three times safer than the potato chip. Okay. Absolutely true statement. <laughs> Suddenly people would be running from that dangerous potato chip. <laughs> Kids are killed by them every day, run! <laughs> Another quick example, your chances of getting Alzheimer by age 85 are one in 10. Kind of scary, actually. The average smoker lives to be age 66. <laughs> so if you were in marketing at a cigarette company, you could say smoking lowers your chance of getting Alzheimer's. <laughs> right? Absolutely correct statement. I can see the commercials now. Go ahead, light up. You won't be getting Alzheimer's. We hope to stamp it out in the next generation. Go ahead, two a day. Now you may ask, why does this matter? And here's why it matters. People get scared all the time. They don't realize that five or 10 times a really small number is still a very small number and not very likely, but they freak out. My mom is the best at this. She always hears these things and she's afraid to use anything. She, and I worked up this example to prove to her that it's irrational to be scared, and it ended up scaring her anyway. So here you go. One out of 1,677,345 people will get mauled by a bear. 
Really not very likely. Could be a bear right there, probably not gonna maul me. They're, really. Statistically, it would just keep walking by. Even if you're a bear, only one out of 335,469 bears are involved in the mauling of a human. But it turns out two out of 10 people have never seen a bear. Therefore, if you've seen a bear, you're 10 times more likely to get mauled by one. My mom's conclusion, don't look at bears. Reasonable. I never went to the zoo till I was 26 years old. But then again, I've never been attacked by a bear either. Maybe mom was smarter than I give her credit for. Okay, all right. I'm going to go on to a uh, next uh, video here, which is going to be a little longer than this one. I believe that's a seven minute video, but I, you know, it's the same from Don McMillan. And I hope you enjoyed the second video as well. Okay, and please take some notes as you go along. I've, I've got some questions at the end. And once again, not, not testing you in any way. So please, you know, just enjoy the video. Okay, just, just some general questions I may have later. Okay, as soon as it starts at my end. Uh, I put my act on PowerPoint several years ago. <laughs> and the reason I did this, I, I, didn't, I don't usually admit this straight up front of my show, but I was an engineer for many years. And I realized in the age of information, we have all this information and no engineer has really tackled relationships because the answers are out there. We just need to find them by good engineering analysis. So I have done that. <laughs> I put it together, and I'm now going to offer the first chapter of my user's guide to relationships. And I thought I'd start with a positive one. Everybody's talking about the key to relationships. I believe this is the key. Oh, by the way, your results may vary. <laughs> I believe this is the key to a good relationship, a long relationship. Your spouse's looks and your vision need to deteriorate at exactly the same rate. <laughs> If that can manage to happen, I can always look at my wife and go, you're as beautiful as the day I met you. <laughs> now let's look into some of the more challenging parts of relationships. I knew my wife was a great arguer, but unlike a lot of guys, I took the time to analyze why I was losing so many arguments. So I plotted the chances of winning an argument versus time. And it turned out the three distinct periods popped up. When we were first dating, I had a 50-50 shot in any relationship. I had no idea that is the best I would ever do. Those are glory days for a man right there. Those are Hall of Fame numbers, one out of two. Because once I got engaged, it immediately dropped to one and four. And then since I've been married, I am 0 for 963. I actually thought I won once. We argued about who won the argument. I lost the argument who won the argument. So I won once, but I'm not allowed to say it. So I actually did, this is a true story. My wife and I were having an argument. I decided to flow chart it to see where I was going wrong, okay? It was a simple enough argument. I was hanging my son's mobile of all the planets and I was hanging them all up and I got to Pluto and I went to hang Pluto and my wife went, you know, what do you do? And I go, I'm not gonna hang Pluto. She goes, what are you talking about? I go, well, Pluto's not a planet. It was, yeah, it was declassified. It's like an astral object now. It's not, she goes, yes, it is. That's where the argument started. Watch where it goes. <laughs> So she says Pluto is a planet. I say, no, it's not. She says, are you saying I'm dumb? <laughs> that is what we call a trap. Because <laughs> as I say yes, that leads to divorce. <laughs> so of course I say no. She says, well, I don't like the way you argue, pulling out science and facts, making me feel dumb. You are saying I'm dumb. Again, if I say yes, that leads to divorce. <laughs> So I say no, and she says, well, you don't respect me. You don't care about my feelings. This is a trap in the other direction. Because I say, no, I don't. That leads to divorce. So I say, yes, of course I care about. And she says, well, do you want to have sex again? Well, that isn't an option. So in my uh, house, Pluto is officially a planet. In fact, it is my favorite planet. And I changed the mobile. All the other planets revolve around Pluto now. So this, I promise, will be the nerdiest thing I present to you. There, in 
Computer design is what I used to do. There's a thing called Boolean logic. It basically says if there's two inputs, A and B, and both are true, the output's true. A and B have to be true. If either one is false, the output's false. It's really boring. It gets funny, I promise. <laughs> there's an OR gate. It says A or B is true, the output's true, and only when both are false, the output's false. Here's how I figured it out. The key, if you're not married, take out your phone, take a photo of this sex chart. This is the key <laughs> to a happy marriage. This is a man and a woman. Two inputs, man and a woman. If the man is right, is wrong, and the woman is right, I started an easy one, that's an easy one. If the man's wrong, woman's right, the woman's right, right? Makes perfect sense, that was easy. If you're both right, doesn't matter, a woman's still right. <laughs> if I'm right and my wife is wrong, which happens every now and then, doesn't matter, a woman's still right. <laughs> and if we're both wrong, uh, the man is wrong. Go ahead. I'll take a couple moments to get your votes. Now, a lot of times I'm, when I get in trouble, I'm trying to help. I was watching my wife vacuum one day. My wife's name's Laura. And clearly, uh, she had no uh, vacuuming plan when she began her vacuum. She would go that way for a while and that way, and it was horribly, horribly inefficient. And I decided I could help her out. I said, you know, honey, I was watching you vacuum, and you could save some time if you just thought about it, if you went around the room like a Zamboni, right? At an ice rink, if you got smaller and smaller, you could finish it like half the time and do just as good a job. I'm trying to help you, it's, it's more efficient. She said, you know what, Don? That is helpful, it is more efficient. You wanna know why? Because you're gonna be doing it from now on. <laughs> Our ongoing argument I call the thermostat wars. My wife, like a lot of women, was born with no internal heating capability whatsoever. She's constantly cold. It could be 100,000 degrees. I'm a little cold. Let's put another blanket on. No, I haven't crossed my legs in 14 years. I like it somewhere between 60 and 70 degrees. She likes it somewhere near the temperature of the sun. It's ridiculous. Our cat has shaved. That's how hot it is in our house. And then finally, I'll end on this. I love my wife, but I can't stand the shop of my wife. And I couldn't prove to her why. She thought, well, she took it personally, like, you don't like being with me. No, I just can't stand it. It's not the way I shop. And I couldn't prove to her how different we're until I got a GPS tracking device and I tracked our shopping trips separately. Here's how I shop. All you have to do in this experiment is go to the mall, right? Here's the mall. Go to the Gap, buy a pair of pants. That's all we both had to do. Here's how I do it. I walk in the mall, take a left, take a right, buy the pants, take a left, take a right, and go home. That's it. That takes me six minutes and costs me $33. That's it, I am done for 2013. Here's how my wife shops, same thing. Gotta go to the Gap, she walks in the mall, there she is right there. Three hours, 26 minutes, $876. And look, she never even got to the Gap. Now, the stunning thing about this is she's seen this. I've been doing this bit for like three years. She came back to me with an answer, I swear to you. She goes, you're looking at that mall thing all wrong. Let's like see who is the more efficient shopper in terms of cost per minute. <laughs> you, Mr. Smarty Pants, spent $33 in six minutes. That's a cost per minute of $5.50 per minute. I spent $876 in 206 minutes, a cost per minute of $4. I kicked your ass, mister. <laughs> and that's when I knew my wife was the woman for me. Thanks. Okay, sorry, I was on mute. So done with the videos, I have some few questions for you. Okay, as soon as my screen starts working again. All right. So did you guys enjoy these videos? Just a short answer, yes or no. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you both. Um, what was so different about Don McMillan's shows than the other comedy shows that you may have watched? You know, looking for at least a one-liner from each of you. Data visualization. <laughs> yes. Okay. Any other? Analytical. Yes, I agree with you both. Um, data visualization, analytical. Um, 
absolutely right. What do you think that I, why, I'm sorry, why do you think that I showed the first video on statistics? Didn't we cover data preparation in module two? Then why this video now? Um, because it has to do with interpreting the mm -hmm. statistics, not just cleaning them up, but when you visualize, you're interpreting because you're presenting the information in a way that you've decided is important. Right, right. Yeah, you mentioned something that hits the nail on its head, presenting. Like, how are you presenting your story? Um, it's again, framing the problem, storytelling, so important, right? So yes, absolutely. And that's what the statistics is. He was trying to prove that and such simple examples, but the way he did the storytelling and how, you know, marketing people or anyone can take the statistics and use it in some way to make it such powerful statements, right? So why do you think I showed the second video on husband and wife relationships or differences? Is this session about watching dance comedy sessions? Well, it has to do with him manipulating data to be funny. Yep. Yep, true, true. Cindy, do you think anything different about the second video? I think he was more, um, he was able to show his point of view with different um, visualizations. Yep, yep, absolutely, yes, visualization. I I think both the videos in a prude are, are in some way kind of presented, you know, first of all, the storytelling aspect and also the visuals, right? when you're using visuals like you you've been like we all of us have been to some comedy shows right but how many have really used you know such powerpoint slides for their comedy shows i i don't know many of them who are really using this kind of a visualization technique but the point is that when you watch this which this comedy show by Doc, don mcmillan and there are quite a few you know you can just if you, if you get interested, you YouTube it and go to YouTube and search for it and you'll find many of them. And he used such techniques. And I, I think what I found out that, yes, after you watch this video, some of these jokes just still stick, on the, stick to your head because you remember the graphics, you remember the visuals, and maybe you'll still remember the jokes, but coming out of other comedy sessions, how many of us still remember the jokes? Well, not many, right? So I think that's, so that's are the reasons why I kind of wanted to, you know, uh, take you through these couple of videos, of course, not about Don Macmillan, but if you have become a fan, you know, by all means, you know, uh, after this session, take a look at some of his videos. Uh, very, 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 uh, you know, that's uh, very interesting ones. All right, so just um, right after I wanted to, um, quickly go over a couple of quotes that I really liked about data visualization. And the first one is by Charles Micheletti, one of the engineers. And he said, you know, data visualization is the art of depicting data in a fun and creative way beyond the possibilities of Excel tables. In a way, it's like setting figures to music. Absolutely right, right? I mean, we've seen it, right? You, you've seen it. Um, you've been kind of working on it and all that data, as soon as it's presented in a visual form, it all kind of, you know, as if you, you are uh, now all that data is making sense, right? All it's kind of telling something to you. It's telling a story probably, right? And then the next one by Steve Jobs, you know, design is not what it looks like and feels like. Design is how it works. When you first read this quote by Steve Jobs, you'd feel like, oh, is he talking about an uh, iPhone? Maybe, but in this case, he was really referring to um, data visualization, really. And his point is, visualization is good, but if it is not going to tell the right story, if it is not going to say what you really want to say and, and let others know, 
then it's really not the actual right design, right? It's not the right visual. So that's what he, he kind of meant here in this particular quote. But let's not just go by, you know, um, these quotes by some of the smart people here. Just look at some of the, let's go through some of the stats based on some research done. The first one, it takes only 13 milliseconds for the human brain to process an image. The human brain processes images 60,000 times faster than text. Wow, look at that staggering um, number there, but you know, 60,000 times faster than text. 80% of people remember what they see compared to 10% what they hear and 20% of what they read. And it just proved it. How many of you still remember Don McMillan's jokes? Not many would have forgotten about it, right? Because we remember what we've seen. We saw some visuals there and not just heard or not just read. 90% of the information processed by the brain is visual, right? Once again, what you see is, you know, what you kind of remember much easily. Social media posts that include images produce 650 times higher engagement than text-only posts. I'm sure this one may resonate with you um, a lot today in, in the world of social media. Um, the more images you have, the more pictures you put in are going to get more hits, are going to be seen by more people than you know, others. So then the other posts that you would be you know, putting in any text posts, right? So yeah, this, this is definitely um, you know, some, some great statistics and which proves that visualization is so important for your storytelling, right? And one of the reasons why we are kind of learning it in this module. So, but story, it's just because we have to you know, do some storytelling, um, you know, doesn't mean that you know, there are some best practices, right? You just cannot just go on and, and tell a story, but there are some best practices. There are some, um, you know, rules, some norms that you'd want to follow, right? And especially when you're using you know, visuals. So let's, let's look at some of them, right? So first and foremost, pictures are worth more than a thousand words, right? If you're doing some storytelling, yes, pictures are very useful. Right, and, and we just talked about that, right? Um, in the last few slides. So, and, and this is, but let's, let's still take an example. Let's say you have data and a story to tell, right? Okay, let's, let's take a look at, you know, sentence of the data or the sentences, few sentences for the data that you have on hand. Then we'll compare it with some data points and then with, the vis with a visual, right? So, Let's see what the story is, right? In sentences, in words. Among the luxury brands, Chanel has 13 million Twitter followers. Burberry, Dion, and Louis Vuitton have 8 million. Gucci has 6 million, and both Dolce and Gabbana and Versace have 5 million, right? This is once again a story based on the data. Now let's put it in a data points form. So here's the breakdown of the brand following on Twitter in millions, 13, Chanel, eight, Burberry, Dion, Louis Vuitton, six, Gucci, and five, Dolce & Gabbana and Versace. So again, you kind of structured that information, right? Information that was just in words. Now you can see some numbers, which probably would have been a little better than what you saw on the previous slide. Now let's look at the visual here. See the difference? You used a very simple bar chart here. You put all the same numbers. And now because you're using a visual, you probably can take, you know, maybe some freedom here to put in or add some more data points. Right, you are able to take in some more companies here, some more luxury brands in this picture, and quite likely that this may stick to your head. This may be remembered more 
then the story that you put in words, the story that you put in a data form, in a data points form, right? Okay, so it's again, and how powerful a visual can be, just proving that point again. Now, it's not just about a picture, right? Choosing the right picture is also important. And you saw that, right? You, you've been through, they read through a lot of material during last week and you know this week as well. And you've gone through that discussion also where we talked about the right visual, the right chart or the right picture. And you know, it could be based on what is the type of message you're going to, you know, and get going to give, or what to kind of um, put it right. What kind of a message you have for others? Is it a comparison of data set? Is it a distribution of a data set, or a breakup of a data series, or you want to have a relationship? You want to, uh, you know. Um, put up a relationship of data series, that's what you present, or you want to present the trend of a data series, right? Now for the comparison, you know, you, there are a few charts that you can make use of, right? Um, you know about the column chart, you know about the bar charts, and these are some very popular and simple charts where you'll be easily able to compare one that data value with other, or one data series with other especially if you have one data value with another would be a scatter chart, right? If you have like, just like an X and Y points, um, or you want to, you know, just look at age and height, you know, something like that. You want to just put it in a two dimensional form, a scatter chart would be a good chart to use. If you want to compare two data series, right? Maybe the sales by two salesmen, uh, line chart would be a, a, a pretty good uh, chart to use or maybe you want to use a bar chart or a column chart, right? So these are some of the charts that you can make use of when you are trying to present comparison of data series. If you want to put up um, or present a chart for distribution, then you have, <clears throat> you, you can make use of one of the you know, charts here. Um, so you can, you know, if you want to, um, you can make use of a histogram you can, and you've, you've already seen that histogram is, is a good uh, way to distribute. If you want to have like, show how many people are in the particular range of ages or a box plot. We talked about box plot during the last, uh, you know, uh, webinar. And then the next one is the KDE plot, which is called the um, density estimate, the kernel density estimate plot, which is used to um, present or you know, if you want to show a probability distribution of data, that's a good plot to use, right? So, so again, for distribution, um, you have some options here. Now, if you want to show breakup of a whole, right? Meaning breakup of a data series or the categories within a particular data series. Um, there's pie chart, there's donut chart, there's a stacked column or a stacked bar chart. Once again, this, this helps you to show different contribution, like, you know, revenue contribution by different regions, right? That could be one of the examples or um, the percentages you want to show across different regions. Um, just a word of caution, right? When you're using pie chart or a donor chart, be careful with how many categories or composition you're going to show, right? Well, because if it is going to be more than four or five, trust me, um, you know, it, it doesn't do a whole lot justice to your presentation or what you're trying to present. It's, it's going to be a little complex, convoluted, and you'll not be able to present exact. So it, it's just a word of caution. Maybe you want to use a different chart when you have more than four or five, um, you know, categories to, to present. So just be careful with that. Um, otherwise, yes, it's a very simple chart, very popular because it could be, you know, um, be drawn very quickly and very easily, okay? Relationship. Now, if you want to show different relationships, we talked about these two charts. So you know about scatter plot, you can use the line chart. And for trends, once again, you have a few options, right? You, we talked about a line chart, we talked about the column chart, and you know about that as well. And then there is area chart, right? 
it, it looks like a kernel density estimate plot, like a probability distribution plot, but it really, it's not, it's really not. It's just the shaded region of a line chart. Like you have drawn line chart and that region has been shaded with different colors. And it just to make it stand out and you know, it's easier to uh, differentiate between different data series if you have, than just using pure line charts, right? Just the lines on the chart here. So just in, you may want to kind of play with whether you want to use a line chart for you know, showing the comparison between data series or a trend, or you want to use an area chart, okay? So the next slide here just puts it all together for all the different charts, like for relationship, for distribution or composition or comparison. Now for relationship, the one chart that we did not talk about is a bubble chart, right? A bubble chart, once again, you can use different sizes of bubbles to show the, you know, the size or the proportion of a data series, right? That's, that's what you can use the bubble chart for. Um, once again, in the comparison, if you look at the multiple items comparison, which is on the top right, one of the charts listed there, uh, number two is spider chart. Didn't we talk about 19, Nightingale's chart? It's spider chart is very, very similar to that chart. If you understood Nightingale's chart, then, and, uh, then spider chart is not going to be really difficult to understand. And when it's being used, it's still popular when you have multiple um, you know, data points to display. So take a look at it if you have not come across you know, spider chart, okay? So any, any questions for the, you know, um, for the few slides that we have gone through so far? Are you still with me, tracking with me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Next, aesthetics cannot be ignored. And what do you mean by aesthetics here? the size, the shape, the color. And let's, let's go through some examples to understand why aesthetics is so important, right? Now let's take a look at traffic light and let's see if you have colored the traffic light this way or would you color a traffic light on the, as shown on the right? Which one would you really use? Let, especially if you're in US and using the traffic lights of the US, so that system within US. Which one would you prefer in this case, left or the right one? The right one. Absolutely, right? You have a red, yellow, and green. That's what we are used to. Yes, in Japan, they use also blue and, and orange. So maybe they'll pick left. But once again, as I said, I had to kind of specify it's for the US and I, and we know red, yellow, and green better than any other colors for a traffic light. Now, many are, are, you know, sometimes we get carried away with 3D. We love 3D and we try to use uh, in our build charts in the 3D format or 3D form. But what happens when, that, when you do that, right? A um, Couple of things happens. One is occlusion that is shown on the left where you have multiple data series. And now just because you kind of used a, a 3D chart, what happens that, you know, sometimes the, the importance, you know, is, is could be hidden or it could be shown much more. It could get magnified here. Let's say the blue chart or the blue series is an important one and the one that, you know, should really stand out. But just because of the way it has been uh, presented here, it would appear to be, you know, not that um, important, right? Yellow would be the one that would stand out. Maybe green would stand out more, or maybe white, but blue does not, right? So that's what it, it you know, it, it depends on what you really want to present, but, you know, 3D can just change that, uh, what you really want to present. Same thing happens when you're using like a, a donut chart, like click on the right side. Um, you know, your proportion could get a little distorted here when you look at this donor chart. Like what's the proportion of the blue there, right? Um, if you look at that, it, it's difficult. It's difficult to visualize what the blue the proportion is and what's, what, what's the percentage of all these three areas because of the way you've used in a 3D format. 
Next, look at this chart. What do you think is wrong with this chart here? It's a pie chart. What do you think is wrong with this chart? Well, the whole point of the pie chart is kind of to show relative percentages. Yeah, you, you, you're kind of right, absolutely. Um, so yeah, you want to use a, um, a part of, of a whole. Oh, I right? know, it's because <laughs> they're, talk, do not bark. Sorry, <laughs> no, that's okay. they're not like all parts of a whole. They're three yes. separate things. Exactly. You're right. Absolutely right. That three separate companies you're trying to show three. Maybe there are three different data series that you're trying to put it in one single chart, which may not be right here. Right. So, yes, absolutely. So you have to be careful with, you know, whether you're showing the part of a whole or you're showing different data series. Now, what's wrong? I mean, here it's already, you know, given away that the left is not the right chart, but the, uh, the right one is. The right one is right. Why is the left one wrong? Why would you not show? It's the same data series, exactly the same percentage. What do you think is wrong with the left chart? Um, it's not starting at zero, so it's hard to compare the overall measurements of one to the other. Like the orange looks like it's like three times the white one. Yes, absolutely correct. <laughs> right? Yeah, if you, if you see the left chart, right? And if you were to just look at the left chart, you'd say, oh, oh God, okay, well, orange is way bigger than blue and white. Then just turn your attention to the right chart. If you look at that, you know, well, blue and white are not really far behind. They're not that way smaller than, um, you know, the orange data series, right? They're just 57%, 54, and the other is 62, because we took the right, um, because the y-axis is corrected here and starts from zero. So yeah, once again, how you presented, right? What's What's the, the dimension that you're using or your X or Y axis, how are you using it? Um, you know, you could distort um, the presentation here. Next, look at this chart. What do you think is wrong with this chart where the blue represents, the blue line represents the ice cream sales and the orange represents violent crimes? What do you think is wrong with this chart? Or why would this chart be wrong? What do you think? I'll be quiet. I'll let Cindy answer this <laughs> one. I don't want to answer them all. Go for it, Cindy. <laughs> um, well, for me, I would say they're not really relevant to each other. Yes. Completely right. different, like. <laughs> yeah. How, <laughs> why would you try to present? How, how do it, how, how are they really related? Are you trying to say that when the ice cream sales go high, there are violent crimes or when the violent crimes go high, there are the ice cream <laughs> sales go higher? Is that not really? But if, if you just look at it, you, you realize that, yes, there is a reason why they both peak. In them during the months of between the months of May and October or September, the reason being it's warmer months, it's summer, so absolutely your ice cream sales go up are higher. Same thing with the crimes, with the weather being nice outside. Yes, there could be some more crimes happening on the road, so there could be more violent crimes. Absolutely, so that's the reason. But once again, they're not related to each other. You can't prove from this chart that you know, because of high ice cream sales, there were more violent crimes or vice versa, right? So be careful with what you present and how you present. Once again, we can go back to Don McNamillan's first video, right? How you present can just distort, right? The things or the statistics could be just used in some way that can you know, just change the whole perception and the presentation. Okay, the next is cluttering is a recipe for disaster. And just don't take my words. Let's look at this slide here. 
<laughs> what's happening here? Well, if, if you closely look at this chart, it is a heat map shown as bars for each or maybe many different countries here. And yeah, I think something like that, right? That's what I look like. So once again, looking at this chart, are you going to be able to decipher this or how long is it going to take for you to really you know, understand this complete chart? It's clutter, right? Maybe if you take only two or three countries and then present it little in a little larger size, maybe it would make sense. Maybe that would be much better. But just because you try to club all, you know, all this 10 or 15 countries together and put it in one single chart and one single slide, it gets cluttered. Your, your audience is going to take such a long time and they're going to be all confused what's on this chart here. So again, just, just, because, or just, be, just because you have different techniques and tools to build a chart, um, you don't, don't want to clutter it. Just keep it as simple as possible. But, and the other thing that once again, and you make use of 3D and try to put it in a 3D form and multiple data series, look at what happens like when you present it, this chart here, like too much information, right? It defeats the purpose of clarity, unnecessary elements, unnecessary 3D format, right? It obscures the, the data uh, that you're trying to present and it may lead to inaccurate conclusions. Absolutely, right? So some, just some rules of thumb here, you know, you want to limit the number of data series or KPIs in a dashboard to nine or less. Keep the visualization simple, as we just mentioned, cluttering really does not help at all. Um, and you really do not look, you may think that you made the best chart in the world by putting it all together and, and or you use different techniques, but the more complex you make a chart, your audience is going to get lost. So if your visual looks cluttered, try a different format. The cleanest format is usually the best format, right? The same, uh, same principle. The KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid, right? Absolutely keep it simple. So next, interactive charts are the next big thing. So, you know, we are in the, in the phase where, you know, in the world where we're using a lot of Python programming, we have lots of uh, different programming skills. You're building on a lot of programming skills and you may be using, you know, different programming techniques or, or uh, technologies to build your charts and you know interactive charts are sometimes really helpful. Let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So this is an interactive chart here. What it is showing, if you look from let's 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 go through this a little bit. So it is showing the percentage of U.S. population by age group from 1950 to 2060, and the X axis, like it's, it's kind of divided into left and right. Basically, if you see, there's a, a, a kind of a little thin divider in between. The left is males and the right is females. And your X axis is kind of showing the percentage of males and females of the total population, the total US population. And if you see the baby boomers are shown in brown, right? In the dark brown are the baby boomers. And what's happening, it is showing the percentage of baby boomers in compared to the total population starting from 1950 to 2060. And as you can see, yes, their, their percentage is, is going to be more when they would have started, right? Uh, right from their birth in 1950 and onwards, um, they grow higher. And then, you know, yes, as they tend to age, yes, you'll see the population going lower and lower for anyone that would have you know, been born in around 1950 or 1960, the baby boomers. So a nice way to kind of, once again, um, present the information and talk about it, right? If, if this is one of the, this is going to be your topic of discussion. Let's look at the other chart here, an interactive chart, which shows you know, the miles per gallon on the y-axis and it shows the horsepower 
and it and and all these little dots there represent the the cars right the number of cars and in in the blue is europe the japan is yellow or orange and then usa is red so as it goes through the different sections of the charts right from the top right you see the chart below is is changing accordingly based on what portion of that scatter plot you're highlighting a beautiful way to really decipher that scatter plot right that scatter plot if you just look at it by itself is going to be meaningless right it's not going to be helpful but now just because you you're highlighting a certain section and then the bottom chart the bar chart is making it clear as to which type of uh, where where do you have the maximum cars for a certain uh, combination of horsepower and miles per gallon okay all right so moving on the final one and my most um, you know as i said the the one that i i really like to uh, say and uh, and present is the value of garbage is garbage right very simplest one but it's very powerful and it's true like if you look at this chart here someone would have spent a lot of time putting this chart together and I don't know how much time is going to take for you, but we'll, we'll try to we'll try to read this chart. What this says is the percentage of people who believe vaccines are safe by country and global region. What you see that you know each of those colored, you know what do you call this dot charts? Um, you know dots are, represent the um, region, the global region. And within the global region, each of the countries represent certain percentages. Now, what is wrong with this chart though? Why, why is this a good example of a garbage chart? And, and the reason I, I, I put this as one of the garbage charts is because after all the hard work that this author has done, of, author of this chart has done, we don't know the y-axis. We don't know what this dots represent really. So it, it, we know that the x-axis represents the percentage zones, but that's all you know. We don't know what is the y-axis used for at all. And whether a country on the top of a global region, one of the global regions, how is it different from another global region which is at the bottom? Maybe just because it's at a higher percentage than the lower, and the lower percentages are on the left, well, still does not make sense to me. So once again, be careful with being innovative with the charts. Here, I'm sure this author has really spent a lot of time building this chart, tried to be innovative, but once again, it led to being garbage. So, and a value of garbage is garbage. So putting it all together, Pictures are worth more than a thousand words. Choosing the right picture is important. Aesthetics cannot be ignored. Cluttering is a recipe for disaster. Interactive charts are the next big thing and the value of garbage is garbage. Right, my favorite one. <laughs> okay, so once again, let's conclude this by showing you uh, one chart here that is very similar to what you kind of looked at um, Nightingale's chart and, and Mendel's, you know, all that work that you kind of went into a discussion. But this is very similar to the Nightingale's chart because this was also done much, much in the earlier times when you did not have all the tools and techniques and computer available. It is done in 1800. And what this shows is Napoleon's disastrous Russian campaign of 1812. If you read at the bottom of this slide here, it tells you that this graphic is notable for its representation in two dimensions of six types of data, the number of Napoleon troops. So left to right, it shows like left is France from where the troops started to and march towards Russia or Moscow. So that beige color 
it shows the, the number of troops, the width of the beige color is actually showing the size of troops that is marching from France towards Moscow. And as you can see here, they are, of course, it's taking time. Those were the times, this is, we are talking about 1800s folks. So of course, that they're, they're crossing through lots and lots of challenges like temper, the weather or the parts of the country or which countries they're crossing through or when they're reaching Russia and before they reach Moscow, but definitely there's, there's a challenge from the Russian army as well. So as you can see that the, the Napoleon army is getting smaller as they reach Moscow and then they get defeated. And while they're coming back, you see the black, the black line there or the, you know, the width of that line is, is so smaller than the beige is because the troops have really dwindled down to very small number. And by the time they come back to France, look at that. It has really come down to a very small number. And why has that happened? it lost a lot of its men to the Russian army, fighting with the Russian army. It lost a lot of its men who were wounded and who, who died um, you know, while coming back or who died because of the brutal weather that they were facing. So, and, and there are much more information in here. Um, you know, as I said, there's latitude, there's temperature, there's direction of travel we talked about, this location relative to specific dates, all that information in one single chart. Beautiful, right? Wonderful. And this is, we're talking in 1800s. The author of this chart, I think it died, is a French engineer who died in probably around 1880s. So definitely this chart is, um, is, is was developed or uh, created before 1880 sometime, right? Uh, and after the the Russian invasion or the you know the Russian campaign of 1812, so certainly between 1812 and 1880 or 1860 that this chart has been built. Beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so last time we talked about you know in the last module you we went through data preparation and you saw that a different you know, stages of data preparation, right? We have data cleaning, we get to data integration of different sources. Once again, because of that, you could have to probably even cycle through the data cleaning again. You may have to go through data transformation. Um, you go through data reduction, which is, you know, reducing your columns accordingly. And this module is about visualization, right? You, you, you learned about many different visuals that you can use within Power BI and you know, just present your data, which could lead to good storytelling, right? Okay. So with that, any, any questions before we move on to talk briefly about assignment three? No, no questions. Okay, thank you. Very good. So assignment three, um, it's due next Tuesday, July 26th. Um, create, now there are the first two bullets, very, very important. So create at least five visualizations in Power BI using industry standards. In your assignment, you are given some, you know, some suggestions on what type of five visualizations you want to build, right? And then on the top of this five visualizations, look at the second bullet, you need to create three Q and A visuals. So total, you need to have eight visuals, okay? You can put all these eight visuals on each of the slides. So there could be eight slides, or you could put all the five visuals from the first bullet on each of its slides. So each, each having its own slide. So that would be five slides. And the Q and A visuals, the three Q and A visuals could be on the sixth slide. That's okay, right? So, and have at least eight slides or six to eight slides is what you'd be really building here. Then, you know, if you'd use the notes feature that would discuss the impact and purpose of each data visualization. Explain your visual, right? Explain your graph, explain your chart. Then you're going to create not one, but 
two dashboards and you have been given instructions on what the dashboard is. You're going to create this dashboard, which is nothing but a page. Whatever the visuals that you created, the eight visuals, you can copy paste them into another page called the dashboard. And to kind of make sense out of it, to tell a story, right? So you have to pick the right visuals for you know, saying or, or presenting a story in, in each of these dashboards. So they should be really kind of related to each other. You publish your work then to Power BI service. You then export your report from Power BI into a PowerPoint. And then that presentation should, as, as I mentioned, explains each of the eight visualization, the two dashboard panels and recommendations for next steps, right? All this should be put together in, in a PowerPoint, as I said, in a PowerPoint form. And most of the PowerPoint slides would come from your Power BI. Um, you know, there's a way to export your Power BI visuals into PowerPoint. So your eight slides, your eight visuals, plus the two dashboards would just come out as is straight from the Power BI. And then the recommendation would be another slide, okay? Any questions on this assignment? And before I go into the rubric. No. Okay. So the rubric, once again, you need a title page. You need the visualization slides. Here it says minimum of eight. I'm okay if you, if you give six, but you know, six to eight, right? But once again, the visuals, minimum of eight visuals, right? The dashboards, you need to have two dashboards, your recommendation of next steps. And then, you know, the present, make sure you run the spell check, make sure there are no grammatical errors in your presentation that carries 10 points. So just by putting in a title page and, you know, just running the spell check and, you know, making sure there's no grammatical errors, there are 15 points, right? So get those 15 points completely because they're up for grabs and you may want to use that. And it's not that difficult to do what, you know, just putting those title slide and running the spell check. Okay. So make sure you look at this rubric, make sure you understand this rubric, make sure you understand all the instructions within the assignment. If any questions, you know, you can uh, feel free to send me an email put it in the classroom. Um, and, uh, but once again, you don't want to put in your code, your Power BI, um, you know, uh, file in, in the classroom, okay? So please refrain from doing that. Okay, any questions on the rubric? No, don't think so. Okay, so in summary, we went through the analysis of the videos. We looked at the videos. We went through some. Uh, uh, we went through a couple of quotes on data visualization. We, you know, talked about some best practices for storytelling for presentation. We talked about assignment and the rubric. And with that, I'm just going to give you a future reference. Once again, I'm not soliciting Dan Macmillan's comedy shows. I'm not soliciting storytelling with data, but it's a wonderful book. If you get a chance anytime after this course. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful book that I've read a couple of times already. Thanks to COVID, I picked up this book um, in a couple of years back and I started to read through and it was a beautiful book on visualization and how you want to do your storytelling. Um, trust me, you would, it's a very interesting one. So um, that's book here. Once again, I'm not the author of this book and I don't work for Whaley, so I'm not soliciting it. I just a reference. Same thing with Don Macmillan shows, right? Um, there's a nice uh, presentation. I mean, he has, I think one of his comedy show was Greatest Charts. Um, and that's the link that I present. I, I kind of put it up here if you want to, you know, watch that uh, comedy show on, on the charts. Okay. So with that, um, I going to open up for any questions that you may have on today's session or you know, in general, this module, um, and this module on uh, data visualization or our course so far. No.
No questions. Okay, thank you. And, um, you know, just wanted to remind you, um, you know, uh, to both Cindy and Don and to also folks who are watching this recording, um, please uh, submit the survey, the mid, uh, the midterm, the mid semester survey that I sent out. If you have not submitted it yet, um, it's going to be really very helpful for me and, and the, the department as well on making sure that if we need to make any changes in the way this course is presented to you, then we want to kind of do that, right? We want to continuously uh, make improvements and your feedback is going to be very helpful. Okay. All right. So if no further questions, you know, thank you. I'm glad that we, we are ending almost on time, although we meant uh, we went three minutes over. Um, I hope it's, it's okay with you. And but thank you for your time and good night. Good night. Good, luck good night. Assignment three. Okay, bye.